Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Bison Video Blog here on WDAY Extra, Inforum.com. Wherever you find us, we're here with Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo. Each week, of course, we're brought to you by Gate City Bank. Dakota Marker Week has arrived as North Dakota State is set to take on South Dakota State in the 20th renewal 20. of the Dakota Marker Series. you got to be kidding me. Oh. 20, wow. I'm not trying I to was jinx there. you, there, buddy oh, boy. But that's it's, all, it's almost that's depressing. Many. We're at 115 overall between these two schools, between the Bison and the Jacks. Eddie Gishu owns a 10-9 advantage in the Dakota Marker Series, which the Jacks have won the previous three, which we'll get to in just a second. We'll get plenty on South Dakota State here, but there are some injuries and personnel to a uh, address right away here, Jeffrey, starting with Will Mostart, who left the game emotional uh, on the sideline, was visibly crying. We now know, sources tell me, it's an Achilles injury. Matt Entz confirmed he's done for the season. This is the second straight year a Mostart brother has been lost with a pretty serious injury. Uh, Will had a sack. The, the crazy part, he got a sack on the play, and it was still so innocuous that he got hurt on. It looks like it'll be Cody Heisman, the sophomore, stepping up to play more in Will Mostar's absence. How big a deal is this? So let's first jump off on that. Well, any injury on the defensive line in a game like this is, is going to be big, and especially somebody who's so experienced as Will Mostar. And like you said, it looked almost normal. Yeah. It was like the Kirk Cousins yeah, thing yesterday we'll with the Vikings, where these injuries, these Achilles injuries, just they seem to almost like a non-contact kind of thing. It's like the ACLs that you've seen over mm -hmm. the years. It's just a, a non-contact thing, and, and it's like they're ready to pop yeah. or something. It's, but uh, uh, yeah, done for the year. Uh, anytime you have a guy who – uh, you know, from Lakeville, who's been around the program now four years uh, with uh, with the NDC defense, it just shortens the rotation, is what it does. And and some young guy, you know, the young guys are gonna have to come up. So Heisman's gonna have to be big. Heisman played a ton last year when Eli went down. Remember, he was right in the mix. His first game was yeah. at FBS Arizona. He's done this twice before against South Dakota State, so he's been through the ringer, but. This is against an all-world offensive line that he's going to go up against on Saturday. Well, South Dakota State, it's unquestioned the top offensive line yeah. in the country. And you look at their stats, they're running and averaging 6.7 yards a carry, which is second in FCS. You look at their offense, number one ranked offense in, in well, fourth in scoring offense. And that, how about first in scoring defense? Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know if we're going to get into the yeah. jacks right now, but uh, you, you just you look at by the numbers and you think, how can NDSU hang in in this game? That's the question Matt Entz is going to ask himself and with his coaching staff all week long. They also may have to do it without one of their starting safeties. Sam Young's status, as we record this at 2.30 on a Monday afternoon, is still up in the air. He was ejected from the game because of a targeting call that happened in the second half against Murray State. The rules dictate, Jeff, that then he'd have to miss the first half of the game this week against South Dakota State. They have appealed it. Entz tells us he has not heard yet one way or the other. Let's just say it's upheld. That's a major deal that Ryan Jones is going to be throwing in against the Jacks secondary. And we'll, we'll see Ryan Jones will, will be the starter. Yeah. Will we see Ty Satter? Will Darius we see Gibbons, Darius maybe? Gibbons? Yeah. I'm not sure. He mentioned a couple of young corners yep. today. Jalen Crumby may see action against the Jacks. Here's what it's going to boil down to is Bison defense needs to play its best game of the year yep. because you got to hang in there with this game. You got to try to make it into the third and fourth quarter and then maybe throw some doubt into the home team. I mean, that's, Jacks have done that. They, they, they've, they've thrown this game into the fourth quarter when they've not been favored. Correct. And, and they've, they've won a couple yeah. of those games when they, you could call it an upset, yeah. whatever. But you got to throw it. you, you got to have a few plays here and there. you got to win the turnover battle. You, I mean, that's what imperative number one yes. is a turnover battle. And you got to hold on to the ball. you got to get some uh, drives of eight, nine minutes or so. And, and, and you got to pick up the third and two. And you got to pick up the fourth yeah. and one here and there. All of those factors, and it's alluded to today, all the little things, all those, you know, little plays. Yeah. You got you to win a lot of those. I go back. You mentioned the 2016 game that ended the streak when the Jacks won up here. NDSU raced out. They were 14 nothing in that game. It was, I think, King Frazier fumbled. And before you know it, the Jacks got a touchdown from Goddard. Before you know it, they were hanging around. Yep. And they end up winning the game on the on the very last play to a Winnicky touchdown. 
the Bison have to flip that script. That's what they have to do on Saturday if they want to win this football game. Yeah, and and they and they need to have the juice. And I think yeah. first of all, my question of this team is, do they have the belief that they can go down there and win? Because you need that belief. Yeah. You need to have a and, and maybe the coaching staff just shuts oh totally everything yeah. off from the outside. I don't know. But you I gotta, think it's the latter. I do. I think they do that this week. You have to instill that the, the the thought that you can go in there and, and win this game because if that doesn't happen, there's nineteen thousand. Will there be nineteen thousand with the weather? It'll be a, yeah, it'll, it'll be a it'll lot. It'll be a sellout there. It's no doesn't doubt. mean it'll be nineteen thousand, yeah. but it'll be a lot. It'll yeah. be, and and they'll have to probably deal with the silent count yeah. and all those things. But you just gotta play big. You you gotta play bigger than than what the prognosticators are are thinking. Yeah, this is. SDSU is going for a fifth straight win. We go back to the national championship game was the last time they played. The Bison, we thought were going in shorthanded, knowing what they were without, without Lipke, without Gindorf. Eli Mostar told me in fall camp he was playing at 60% in this game, and we got we got our introduction to Amar Johnson in that game, even though we saw Johnson score in the game in the regular season up here. I mean, this was SDSU at its finest and how they played in Frisco. It was un- unquestionably the better team. Yeah. I mean, unquestioned yep. the better team, and that hasn't changed. It was changed. over by the fourth quarter. Yeah, and yeah. that hasn't changed. Yeah. Now, again, how does NDSU get this game into the into the fourth quarter? You just can't give up plays and 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 make plays. I mean, I, again, I'm going to go back to the turnover margin. That'll be number yeah. one. How is this flipped in your mind? How is this series? Well, SDSU now has got the upper hand. Is it? I asked Matt Entz that. I don't know. He said it's basically one class of guys. I think NDSU fans are banking on that because once these guys move on after this season, then we'll maybe see. there's a drop-off. But I don't know about that. Well, How, what do you attest this we'll to? We'll see. I, obviously we'll see. recruiting. I mean, obviously yeah. recruiting. And you have to have a good quarterback. I, I think Mark yeah, Gronowski is is fantastic quarterback. I think they've worked the portal really well. You look at the guys they got. Stallbird, O'Brien. Yep. Uh, there's two other guys that are Jason Freeman. All those three guys are starters that they got out of the portal. That's a big deal in my mind. How many starters does the Bison have I think on the portal? It's two, one or two, depending Tumeric, on what you count. Yep, yeah, yep. depending on what you count on as official starters. That's a big deal to me. Well, and, and it gets a combo of everything. Yep. I think they've developed their players. Yep. Their offensive line is, is veteran oh. and, and, and strong, and, and you know guys have been around. What do you have? About 15 guys in their sixth year, and yep. and and obviously 15 guys who are bought in. To, to their sixth year. Sometimes you get a lot of older guys. I've saw it, I've seen it in SIU where they had one year 16, six year guys and just f- fell flat. That ain't the end. case here. No. They, they're engaged. You start from the Yankee twins and it all goes with Mark Gronowski. This team is eight and oh. They've won 22 football games in a row. Heck, it could have been 23, Jeff. They lost that crazy seven to three game in Iowa to start last football season where yep. Tucker Kraft got her. You mentioned the stats. They're fourth in scoring offense. They're first in scoring defense. They're first in total defense. These are stats we used to rattle off with the Bison. The Jackrabbits hold all that advantage right now. I think they look like the 2019 Bison. They look like oh, several boy. of those NDSU uh, national championship teams. Do they not? I'm not, I'm not arguing yeah. there. No. I mean, that's what NDSU in those title years, that's what they look like. And, and again, they're not unbeatable. I mean, they... they but you well, got to do been for a year and a half though but, now, man. <laughs> but uh, you, you got to do some things, and you got to change the script somehow. And and I, I think what did Ant say? You have to get them off script. So how much do you think they look at the Montana State game? I know they don't have the same personnel as Montana State. Saying okay, if there's one team that pushed to the absolute limit, it was them. And how many chances did Montana State have in that football game to either go ahead and win it and missed out on well, it? Well, and what again, that's at. that's why I say that yeah. it's not like they've won every game by 45 yeah. points. I mean, uh, but you got to do some things yep. and you got to come up with some wrinkles. I mean, I don't know if it's a, some reverses here or or something, but I just think to go out and and play straight up football against these guys yeah. is not going to work. No, not not with that offensive line. I don't I don't think so. And the Bison are going to need a defensive performance that we have not seen yet in 2023 in my mind. Yep, and it starts up front. Yes. I think you got to you can't limit uh, give these guys 7 8 yards of carry no. and if that happens then it's going to be a long day. Well, here's the thing too. Third down conversion. These are the top two teams in the country on third down conversion. NDSU's got to get SDSU off the field. That's the biggest thing to me in the four games they've played where the Jacks have won. SDSU's converted on a third and five, on a third or and longer. six. Or longer. Or right. longer and kept drives alive that end up being touchdowns. At, well, and then and you're a visiting team and, and you go into yeah. a, a stadium like this, you can't just let the momentum snowball on you. I mean, I, I think uh, Cam Miller is going to have to have his best game of the year and he's going to have to be good on third down. He's, he's going to have his best game against the Jacks. And that you, you and I were talking about after the end's press conference. Yeah, that storyline's been beaten to death, but it's still there. 
He Austin Sumner dealt with that forever. The old Jacks quarterback right. that he never could beat the Bison. Miller's got that right in his face that he's never beaten him in the four but times he's played. If you're Cam Miller, you can't take no. that solely on your shoulders. I mean, this is uh, you need some teammates to make plays. And yep. Just because you haven't beaten South Dakota, it's not you. They, yeah. they, they just weren't good Correct. enough last year to beat yep. South Dakota State in the title game. So, I mean, you got to go into the game. You can't be tight and have to think, i got to win this game by myself if you're Cam Miller. Let you me, cannot do yeah. that. Let me go back to the first half of the game here. The Bison, I don't think, played a better half of football all season last year. Yep. And I'll even take in the first eight games of this season, the first half they played against South Dakota State. I know Hunter Lipke was on the team, Cody Malk, yes. But it is capable. There's still, Nash, there are still guys on that team that are playing this year. That's what they need to replicate somehow of how they play in the first half last year against the Jackrabbits. Well, confidence. I mean, yeah, like the whole thing. They'll, they'll, they'll the need mentality. that confidence. They'll need that confidence. Yeah. They'll need that. Uh, again, I, I don't know what other word other than belief. If, you, if yeah. they don't believe or if they're not confident yeah. enough to go in there. And, and, and you know what? Uh, I, I anticipate they will be in pregame. I anticipate yeah. these are young guys who are used to winning. I anticipate they'll go in there and, and be ready to play. Whether it's good enough, we'll see. It's going to be a heck of an environment. These are the games we really love covering because yep. it's going to be dynamite down there. Every year that I've gone down starting in 2009, uh, you can just see it elevating Colpac 11, 13, 15 when the stadium was being renovated, 17 when they won the Jacks beat the Bison in Brookings, 19 when College Game Day was there. Two years ago, remember the Jacks raced out, it was 24 nothing before yeah. SD, NDSU made that a game. Every year down there, it's been at a little more level. I think it will be again on Saturday. And when NDSU and SDSU in Division One, mm. talking 2003, I was yeah. there at the at the at the farmer's house <laughs> at, at the marker at the border. And uh, NDSU was a superior program then. South yeah. Dakota State was Division Two. But kudos to how the Jacks have built it over yep. the years. And then and, and again, we talked about Murray State last week. They have to invest, yep. and South Coast State's invested in their athletics. They found donors, and they they funded at a high level, and this is what you get. One other thing you asked, Matt Entz, about Joe Stuffel's status. It's day-to-day. -day. We'll see. That's another big key, if they can get their huge blocking and receiving tight end on the field against the Jacks on Saturday. It seems like he'll play a shoulder. Yeah, if he's, They expected him back at yeah. practice today, so that tells me that Joel Stuffel is going to play, and he's going to have to score. Yes. I mean, I, I, they're yep. going to have to find a way to get Joel Stuffel into the yep. end zone. This is not the only big game in the Valley this week. It's, it's the one that gets our attention, but the game in Carbondale, boy, that's a monster one now. With South Dakota, who just lost to the Jacks at Southern Illinois, that one is a monster well, one. Well, South Dakota's got to restore order. I yeah. mean, they, man, they got beat pretty they good did. in the last three quarters against South Dakota State. And, you know, I mean, everybody thought the Coyotes were rubber stamped in the playoffs. <laughs> you got to win at the end of the year. They still have a UND to play. They do. They have this game. They have UND next week, and then they end with Western Illinois. So we know they're going to get the one at the yeah. end, but the next two are certainly going to be intriguing to see how they get to the finish line here. Don't forget, of course, we have game day coverage beginning on Saturday morning, 10 a.m. with Bison Game Day, live in Brookings. Are Jeff, we outside? I believe we are. Oh, man. So we better double layer up. <laughs> Don't get caught like you were in uh, Springfield oof. earlier this season or Macomb last year. Uh, Logan Campbell, Kyle Emanuel join us as well. Then don't forget, we hit the air 150 with a kickoff at 2 o'clock between the Bison and the Jackrabbits. Jeff will be back with us for our Bison Media Zone show on Wednesday. Stories week all week long at Inform.com and on WDAY. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest Bison video blog brought to you by Gate City Bank.